today we will be discussing how can we make a cell competent. Host cell competent. That means the host cell is the cell which will receive the target or desired DNA and why we should make it competent. Because we know that DNA is hydrophilic in nature. DNA is hydrophilic in nature but the cell membrane is basically or nuclear membrane whatever we think this is basically hydrophobic because it is made up of phospholipid bilayer so it is natural that normally the cell membrane will not pick up the DNA from external sources not uh, eventually but Obviously, there may, this may happen because we have already learned the transformation experiment by Griffith. So, but normally when we are doing this huge biotechnological processes, so we have to make some measurements so that we have to make some procedures so that the cell can easily take the DNA, pick up the DNA inside. And that is the competence of the cell. So, how can we make a com cell competence? Let us think. So at first we have to think whether the cell is having cell wall or not. Clear? Suppose if the cell, if the cell is having cell wall like bacterial cell, plant cell, fungal cell, then what we have to do? We have to first remove the cell wall. Clear? And if it is animal cell, we don't have to remove the cell wall. Cell wall is already not there. So cell membrane is the outer covering. And if these are the cells, then we have to remove the cell wall and make it like this. We are, if it is a bacterial cell, we are we can make it competent by treating with calcium chloride or divalent cation. Now, when we are, why you are using the divalent cation, which should be have a specific concentration, we can the divalent cation will be used, and this stimulates clear the attachment of DNA over the over the or the attachment of the DNA or the vectors over the receptor sites receptor sites and make a core on this region. The cells are then incubated clear in ice and then given a heat shock of 42 degrees centigrade. So a heat shock of 42 degrees centigrade for a very brief period and then again it's kept in ice. So when we are we are giving heat shock of the DNA and now directly enters within the cell. So, this is how the plasmid can enter in the bacterial cell. Now, there are other methods. So, here the, the procedure which we are thinking about, these are mainly the, this is a procedure where the vector has been used to insert the target DNA into the cell. But there are certain cases where we don't use vector, we use directly the target cell target DNA into the cell. So there are certain procedures also like micro injection. Here micro injection is a procedure which is used in the is a vectorless. So here you can see this is the procedure for micro injection. It is very precise and is done absolutely under the microscope. It is mainly meant for the animal cell where a very pipette micro pipette is used which is having the uh, suction and finally the dna is poured directly into the nucleus and so you can see and the dye is used to see observe whether the dna has been poured in or not so this is micro injection so where a micro pipette is used and is done completely under the microscope under microscope another such method is ballistic gel gun clear where the um, tungsten or gold particles are coated with the desired dna tungsten or gold particle is coated with the desired dna and they are kept in the this um, nylon micro projectile clear and this uh, this is the plate where the target tissues are kept and this is the plate to stop the nylon micro projectile. So it is kept here, here the, on the, the 
tungsten or gold coated with the desired DNA is kept on the 9 volt micro projectile and it by the great force it is inserted into the cell which is present here but the projectile is blocked till this portion because this is a plate which blocks the movement of the micro projectile any further and but a great but with, with a great force this go, the desired DNA which uh, is coating the gold or tungsten is enters into the target cell and another device is there where the high voltage electric current is used electric uh, two high voltage electric current is used to make a tiny pores in the cells clear and finally by a projectile the you can see here this is the finally by the projectile it is the DNA is passed into the cell. Now, when a protein encoding gene is expressed in a heterogeneous cell, it is called recombinant protein. And the cells having this gene of interest can be grown in a large scale or in small scale. When they are grown in a small scale, like in laboratory purpose, they are extracted by various processes and purified. When we need them, but when we need them in a large scale, then there is a continuous culture medium where from one portion the medium is given and to maintain the exponential growth of the host or this transform, transform, transformant and from the other portion the product or the medium along with the product is taken out which is later on purified. And for this continuous culture, we use bioreactors. So bioreactors are used, uh, these are the devices which is used to maintain this continuous culture when we require the product in a very large scale. So for large scale production of the recombinant protein, we use bioreactor. Now what is bioreactor? These are the large vessels of very large volumes and where a large amount of protein can be produced and there are two types of bioreactors start tank bioreactor and sparse tank bioreactor basic uh, phenomena is same only fine few fine differences are there so let us discuss what are the two types of bioreactors so you can see here this is a bioreactor this is uh, made up of steel uh, it has large, it has a volume of about 100 to 1000 liters and where the raw materials are basically con converted here to products. And there are two types of bioreactor. This is the start tank bioreactor and this is the sparse tank bioreactor. Now, so you can see here, so there is a motor and there is a shaft and on the shaft there are various blades are attached and the medium along with the host is inserted here and it is kept up to this level and a, a, and a thermometer is used here introduced here so that the temperature can be maintained and the outer cup there is a water there is a lane or there is a system containing the water which may be cooled or warmed uh, to regulate the temperature. Here outer covering, it contains a double layer. Yeah, the outer layer is filled up with water and that <coughs> is used for maintaining the temperature. And the pH is also maintained, a constant pH is also maintained here. So there is pH, there is acid base to, you can insert acid base to maintain control the pH. Here is the <coughs> here is the opening for inserting the stem steam for stabilization to keep the whole thing sterilized, clear. And there is temperature uh, thermometer also. And now this uh, there are various type of blade. The upper blade is of different types, and the lower blades you can see these are of different types. Clear. The upper blade, blade is the mainly the when this now we are putting the there is an outlet where from the product can be product along with the other substances can be taken out. Now when this is at first 
when we want that particular product, we, along with the medium, we introduce the medium, the raw materials and the recombinant that bacteria containing recombinant DNA or that the, what we call the transformant clear, which is now inoculum. A small amount of transformant is introduced which acts as inoculum. Now as the time will go, they will use, utilize the media and they will grow clear, they will grow, the cells will divide and when they divide, they, our target your desired DNA will also divide and using the raw material this desired DNA now will produce the products through transcription and translation. So as a result after a certain period of time we will get enough product in this medium and during when this process is going on it produces large amount of foam and this, this is the foam breaker which breaks the foam and these these blades which are present they actually rotate by the uh, rotated by the motor and <coughs> it is a continuously they mix up the mixture so that air can flow throughout the mixture clear and there is enough air in all in each and every part of the this medium and so that bacteria can grow well so this is how it is acting and now this is the sparse tank bioreactor which has all this uh, pH control, temperature control, the area to insert medium and all these are there to take out the product, all these are there and along with that they have a device to generate the bubbles or foam and when these bubbles are broken the oxygen gets dispersed into the medium so that enough each and every part of the medium gets enough oxygen so this is about the sparse tank bioreactor and next is the downstream processing that is the downstream processing is actually the after the product is produced in the bioreactor we have to take it um, get this in purified form this purification and finally forming a market a finished product for marketing is called downstream processing so downstream processing consists of separation of product from the medium first of all after we collect the medium from the bioreactor we have to separate the product from the medium then purify the product clear from whether the other substances because there, there will be that bacteria there will be certain amount of medium along with the product so we have to purify the product and next we have to because this product we are not going to use in one day so we have to formulate a proper preservative for the product and we have to use the preservative to preserve the product next is the quality control in the testing clear various clinical testings for the drug if it is drug then there will be various clinical testing and certain quality control measures are done and finally it is ready for the marketing.